today we're taking a look to see what differences, if any, that there are between uncompressed and compressed RAW files. Now this has become quite a requested topic recently since the announcement of the A7 IV, due to the rather controversial aspect that it can only get the full 10 frames a second in compressed RAW, while only getting about 6 frames a second in uncompressed. And I said it wouldn't personally bother me, as even right now with the A7 III, I don't really shoot bursts in uncompressed RAW. Following which, several people then asked, is there actually any justifiable benefit to shooting uncompressed RAW or not? So, we'll take a look at the pros and cons to each format and compare up some side-by-side -side shots to see if there is a noticeable difference or not. But just before we get into that, let me take a moment to tell you about Skillshare, who are the sponsors for this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes available on a wide range of topics, covering things like photography, video production, web design, art and writing, to name but a few. The classes on average run for between 30 to 60 minutes, and each one is broken up into chapters that you can come back to as and when you please, which makes them easy to fit around even the busiest schedules. And it doesn't matter about your skill set either, whether you're a total beginner or wanting to expand your existing knowledge. Basically, Skillshare has something for everyone. But if you don't believe me, why not check them out for yourself using the link in the description down below, and the first 1,000 people to do so will get themselves a one month free trial. The first points to address is that not all cameras give you the option of compressed or uncompressed RAW, and secondly, there can be variation between the manufacturers in how they are handling their RAW files. So with this, we'll be looking at Sony RAW files, specifically from the A7 III. The basic philosophy of RAW files is that they store all the data that's pulled from the sensor, unlike JPEGs, which drop a lot of what is considered unnecessary. So if you haven't already guessed by this point, an uncompressed RAW file is just all the information from the sensor whacked into a file and then slung on a memory card. Whereas compressed RAW files will compress the data down, of which the main benefit for this is file size. On the A7 III, Uncompressed RAW files are 48 meg each, while compressed RAWs are half that at only 24 meg. This not only means that you can get more shots on your memory card, but it also means you can get more shots on your computer, you can get more shots in the buffer before it starts backing up, the buffer can clear itself quicker, and it takes less time to transfer all the shots from your memory card onto your computer. Basically, it speeds everything up in every aspect. However, the compressed RAW format of Sony cameras, at least the older ones, is not a lossless compression, meaning there will be some lost data compared to the uncompressed RAW. The big question is, does that lost data make a noticeable difference or not? And unfortunately, this is where things get a little more complex. You see, I used to think that uncompressed RAW files were 14-bit and compressed RAWs were 12-bit. Bits referring to the number of colour shades that can be stored within the file, so more colours should equal more accurate looking photos, but also more data which could then account for the difference in file size. However, I've since found on Sony's website, the bit rates for RAW files actually varies more depending on what drive speed you're shooting at. They claim that on the A7 III, any single shot mode, the RAW files are 14-bit regardless of if it's compressed or uncompressed, while in burst modes, the uncompressed RAW will stay at 14-bit, but the compressed RAW drops down to 12-bit. So for all of these comparisons, I've taken four versions of each image to cover all the bases. Uncompressed in single shot and burst mode, and then the same for compressed RAW in single shot and burst mode. And the first thing I noticed is that the file sizes didn't change with the uncompressed RAW. They stay 24 meg regardless of if it's a 12-bit or a 14-bit. So the first test I ran was a simple, straightforward shot of two toy cars with a correct exposure, making no adjustments to the RAW files in post. So these are purely straight out of camera. And to my eye, I am seeing zero difference between any of them. The histograms show a little bit of shifting around between the shots, but nothing appears visibly different. So I moved on to shots where you could push the exposure in post to see if there were any changes hiding in either the highlights or the shadows. 
So I next took some overexposed images and pulled the exposure, the white, and the highlights all back. And again, minor variations in the histograms, but actually very little to see in terms of difference between them all. So I then moved on to some underexposed shots, and this is where the differences do become visible. Now, it is worth bearing in mind that these are beyond ridiculously underexposed. I had to push the exposure up a full 5 EV and ramp the shadows all the way up and only just getting something like a correct exposure. Now, comparing the single shot compressed up to the uncompressed shot, surprisingly, there seems to be very little difference in terms of noise and details. But where there does seem to be a difference is the background tone. The uncompressed raw holds onto the blue colours of the wall fairly accurately, while the compressed shot, the shadow recovery seems to be bringing in a hint of red, which onto the blue wall is then creating a slightly purple colour cast. However, looking to the burst compressed shot, we see a noticeable decline in image quality, with a huge amount of noise over both the uncompressed and the single shot compressed raw file. Now, most likely, this is due to the fact that it is a 12-bit file rather than 14. And then for the final comparison, I took a wider angle underexposed shot of the entire studio in order to bring in a wider range of color tones with the RGB lights up here and the colored lights across the wall over there should all present a bit more of a challenge. Now, this one seemed to throw up a curveball as I noticed the uncompressed roars. There were areas of the shots that should have been black, such as the camera lens and the A6400 that was sitting on the desk actually had patches of green in them, which on the compressed rows appear to have been cancelled out by the redshift that we saw earlier. So in those instances, the compressed rows actually appear to have more accurate colours, while the 12-bit compressed burst shot again has a lot more noise becoming visible over the rest of them. Now, in reality, as I mentioned earlier, these tests are being pushed well beyond reasonable levels. Very rarely is anyone lining up a shot to intentionally be five stops underexposed. For far more real-world use, the general conclusion seems to be that for shots that are going to have little to no post-processing done on them, then there's basically no noticeable difference between compressed or uncompressed, especially if you're in single shot. If you're going to be pushing the editing quite a bit, then the 14-bit uncompressed gives a little bit more scope than the 14-bit compressed in being able to hold on to the colors in the shadows, but makes no difference to the highlights. The bigger difference comes in with the 14-bit versus 12-bit, with the 12-bit suffering a lot more noise in the shadows when they're being pushed. As always, it boils down to personal preference. Me personally, I opt for uncompressed when shooting in low light, such as nighttime or weddings, as there's often a strong potential that I'm going to want to push the shadows quite a bit. Whereas if I'm shooting in good light, like in the middle of the day, then I generally stick with compressed as there's usually far less demand for raising the shadows. And I've always found little to no difference in the finished results. And more so if I'm shooting action, because the smaller file size can be an absolute blessing at times and far outweighs any minute benefit that I might see from the uncompressed image quality. Although I think the bigger takeaway from all this, I think, should be the fact that the bitrate actually drops between single and burst mode in compressed RAW. So if you're like me and shoot in compressed RAW quite a lot, it might be worth sticking to single shot and then switching into burst mode as and when you need it, rather than just leaving the camera in burst mode and then blipping the shutter to get the one shot at a time when you want it. And that brings us to the end of this video. As always, if you have any questions or queries, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, then please consider supporting the channel if you haven't already done so by clicking the subscribe button and the bell icon, and then hopefully we'll see you in the next video.